His name is Jason Petty. He's an artist and poet and activist and the co-host of a new podcast called The Red Couch Podcast. But you may know him better as Propaganda, the man behind albums like Crimson Chord and Excellent, as well as his newest album, Crooked. We loved hearing Prop's perspective on young people and culture, as well as his deep love for the local church and the message of Jesus. So hopefully this conversation not only gets you thinking, but also gives you some practical steps to better engage teenagers, especially teenagers today. Up next, we got Propaganda. He's going to be talking about what every teenager needs from the local church. Propaganda, you are a true poet and a scholar, sir, and I love you. I'm your number one fan. Carl approved. Not that you need my approval, but love your stuff, man. Prop, thank you so, so much for being here with us today. We are just so excited. We love your music. We love your podcast. We love your work. We just love you. So this is so wonderful. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> yes, finally. We've been Elle and I have been talking about man, right. we gotta get prop involved right. somehow. What can this we so do? Dope. So right. We yeah. got this conference going on. We're like, yo, prop's gotta be our first call. This is the chance. So, this is it. our chance to be friends with prop. So yeah. I don't know if you haven't really agreed to this, but I consider us friends now. So Oh well no, I'm in. <laughs> okay, I'm great. In. Super yes. perfect. So dude, I mean for those few people out there who do not know who you are. We feel bad for them, but if you could give us a little intro into who you are, kind of some of your story, and then what you're working on these days. Yeah, that's few. That's that's few, as you say loosely. There's plenty that don't know, but uh, yeah, no, I'm. You know, I mean, I'm Los Angeles native. You know, born and raised South Central LA, and in and around sort of just the LA area. Um, I spent most of my time sort of in like a predominantly uh, kind of Latino neighborhood. Uh, so with that, I guess like multicultural training just started <laughs> really early with me. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta learn Spanish or you, you don't get any friends, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so, so I, I, I grew up in that sort of environment. Uh, my father was a, um, Vietnam war vet. He's, uh, he was part of the Black Panther party. Um, uh, my parents became believers when I was in elementary school uh so but it wasn't like this sort of stark difference like we weren't you know we're not the uh sort of what what we're not the success story that people would expect or want you know what i'm saying in the sense that like you know my my uh both my parents eventually became college grads but you know we i wasn't in you know sort of like nine gangs and about to overdose and you know it wasn't it wasn't like that with us like we you know we were a working class family that you know from the inner city and uh you know and kind of had good heads on our shoulders you know and uh so I think that somewhere between sort of like middle school and, and high school um was when I think, and at probably at a youth camp, I, I think I was a product of just really good youth <laughs> ministry. You yes. know what I'm saying? Where like our, you know, and, and then in youth ministry from people that sort of look like me and it was from my neighborhood. So we asked you to be part of this conference and this conversation because totally. you are deeply connected to the church. Obviously you grew up being exposed to youth ministry um, mm-hmm. and you're still deeply connected in that world. Yeah. But you have a for sure a different perspective than those of Absolutely. us who are like in the local church, you know, doing youth yeah. ministry on a daily basis. So yeah. here's what I'm wondering from you is um, as somebody who is um, kind of influencing young people and interacting with young people all over the place, different cultures and contexts. Um, what are you seeing in this generation that maybe for those of us as youth pastors yeah. don't see that they're looking for or needing? I feel like the, I feel like kids are just, a little stressed, you know, and just I feel like they just kind of need somebody to show a little empathy, you know what I mean? Show a little like actual transparency, you know what I'm saying? And, and um, kind of like some like, yo, we're kind of in this together. I feel like some things were, some things are universal. I think there's like, uh, I mean, it's a theme that I'm kind of going back to a lot, but I just really think like, like, like let them know they belong, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, and, and which is very different than fitting in, you know, mm-hmm. belonging and fitting in are two different things. I yeah. think that like, um, but if we show that sort of transparency, that real authenticity that like, yo, like, I feel you. It's not like I've, I think a lot of times we have a way of saying like, I was once in your shoes. <laughs> now I'm done. Like I figured <laughs> this out now, 
because I'm an adult and right. I don't struggle with those. That's not true. Like, you know, the mm-hmm. more, and it's funny cause like as an artist, I get to sit at the table with the leaders, with the adults and with the kids. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I feel like these conversations just aren't much different. You know, like, <laughs> you know, we're, we're all, we're all still just trying to find, we just want to, everybody still get to the little kids table. And then somebody's response might be like, man, since I'm never really welcome to the cool kids table, forget it. I don't want to be at the cool kids table. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I mean, I feel like we're, we're all just desiring sort of the same thing. Like we just mm-hmm. want to belong and we yeah. want that authenticity and somebody to love us for who we are, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and that's exactly it. I love what you're saying. And we talk a lot about like trying to figure out as youth workers how to create environments where students feel loved and they feel a part yeah. of and like they want to come to and want to yeah. bring their friends to. Totally. Uh, what would you say to like youth workers that feel like, man, I'm failing at creating an environment for my students. Like, mm-hmm. how can we yeah. create something like that where students want to be and want to bring their friends and feel mm-hmm. a part of? Yeah. yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, it's tough, especially like, you know, understanding the nuance of a youth ministry. Like, you're not driving the whole ship, you know what I'm saying, for the entirety of your church. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you're, you, it's still in some ways like a, a department, you know what I'm saying? So, like... There's only so much you can do from an institutional perspective. But I feel like I feel like what students would would desire is like, yo, like, man, like, give me Mm -hmm. let me see inside this building a Jesus that matches the Jesus I'm going to need outside this building. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I've I one example I I know of like in my own life is I've I've had a chance to tour like in different countries specifically in Africa I think it's an interesting thing like in an attempt to get our kids um outside of sort of their sort of safe box you know we we send them on mission trips which I'm not which I think is necessary you know uh to see the world differently but uh, but it's but it's interesting to think about like what we're actually communicating <laughs> to them. because like what I remember is on the African side I remember like a youth leader saying hey we have to prepare for when an American youth group is coming. So we're going to destroy one of the walls at our school because apparently <laughs> American kids like painting walls. So like, and I was like, this is the funniest thing from their perspective. They're like, there's nothing wrong with this wall. They just, they always want to paint it. So I guess, you know what That's I'm saying? That's amazing. Like, what are we communicating? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and then, but then like, but then they're saying, okay, so like, here's the questions that like our kids are asking. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're, you, you, your kids are asking, like, yo, how far is too far? Like, can mm-hmm. I have a girlfriend? But it, you know, they're like, my kids, is, my, our kids are asking, like, hey, so, like, so in Romans, when it says, like, not eating meat, sacrifice to idols, like, should I? Like, we think that's metaphorical. <laughs> they're like, no, like, my uncle's a witch doctor. Oh, my goodness. This, wow. right. this animal has been sacrificed. But right. Now, do I eat? Like, what do you, oh my. What, what do I do? <laughs> like, so, like, I feel like we're not preparing our right. kids to answer like actual questions. Right. You know? <laughs> right. So, right. So I think at the end of the day, man, like if you're going to create an environment, create an environment, I would say that doesn't put sort of safety and comfortability at mm-hmm. the top of what we're building our institution around, but like yeah. an institution, but you're building a community and environment that says like, yo, mm-hmm. like you, this is, we can be as raw as we need to be. We can be as real as we need to be. And I'm not going to like, not hear what you're saying mm-hmm. because you didn't say it like in a PG way. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, and one thing that our pastor says a lot is he hopes that the local church is the safest place to talk about anything. Mm-hmm. And so we kind yes. of bring that to youth ministry and we mm-hmm. say, Hey, yes. not only talk about anything, but yeah. say anything. Right. Like it can yes. be a rated R conversation. Mm-hmm. That's yes. okay. Yeah. Like I yeah. like what you're saying. Cause sometimes we do like to scrub it yeah. clean. Like, Hey, yeah. We can talk about anything, but let's keep it PG. We're like, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. that's not anything. <laughs> well, that's not anything. Like, yeah, <laughs> we need to have some real conversation. So it's totally. okay. Like, yeah. I remember we had this girl in our youth group one time. This was a middle school youth group. Mm-hmm. And she had a cuss word on her shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, Right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we didn't say anything to her. We didn't sure. tell her, like, you know, take that shirt off. You got to go yeah. home. Like, right. you just got to accept kids where they're at and right. know, like, that's what, what they're living. Yeah. Like, that's what they're yeah. wearing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, what it like is that is that really like the hill I'm gonna die on? Like right. this kid right. walking in, we don't know if she's suicidal. We don't yeah. know. Right. Well we want her yeah. to feel sit like yeah. feel safe being there, not like create a safe, like scrub queen 
clean place, yeah. but yeah. we want our students to feel accepted no matter who they are, mm -hmm. what they're talking oh, yeah. about, what they're doing. Yeah. We want the local yeah. church, the local youth group to Absolutely. be the place where they know they can have yeah. those conversations. Mm -hmm. Cause if they can't have them there, then we're really? messing up. Yeah. 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 And the reality is they're going to have them. Like mm -hmm. they're going to have, they're just going to have them somewhere else. Like yeah. I know for me, like I said, I, I found sort of, my discipleship and tutelage on like Wednesday nights at like hip hop shops where we mm -hmm. freestyled and, you know, you met older guys and they would kind of walk you through stuff. So their discipleship was, I mean, it wasn't Christian discipleship, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was a discipleship nonetheless, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So like, mm -hmm. and it was because like, again, I was, I didn't have to feel like there wasn't a, I don't, there wasn't like a, a an ex uh, a, a trial era like a, a an examination there wasn't like i didn't have to audition mm -hmm. to be a to to be a part of this mm -hmm. you're already a part of it yeah. i'm just helping you figure out what it means to be a part of this you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so you already feel like you belong you know what i'm saying then it's okay like you know if you i'm gonna to, to use a skating analogy again i'm a californian it's like you know just i'm gonna show you how to kickflip it's mm -hmm. not like we're not friends unless you can kick flip. Like <laughs> right. we're already friends. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna show you how. You know, <laughs> so I feel like I feel like that's the sort of like, and I think that in 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 some ways, uh, the 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 youth environment that when I finally became a believer in high school, mm -hmm. like the youth environment I had was that to where it was like, no, you're already one of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we're yeah. just gonna like, you just let me just let me show you what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yes. That's, that's a great mindset. You're already mm -hmm. one of us. Like, right. that's what we should be thinking yeah. as yeah. youth pastors yeah. and youth workers. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, this kid is already one of us. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. uh, we were to talk about yeah. some, like, practical. Your yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. we've talked a lot of, about a lot of, like, big ideas here. Like, uh -huh. some things that we maybe are not doing well as the church. Things that, opportunities that we have to do it a little bit better. So we've talked about authenticity and belonging and all this good stuff. But for you, what do you think are some practical steps that we can take as youth pastors or as youth workers to actually like yeah. do this stuff to make it yeah. real? Yeah. Um, I, I, I have a few thoughts. I, I would like to temper those thoughts with the fact that like, you know, I'm not a youth pastor. Sure. So like, please understand, like I take, take these with the humility that, that, that should be communicated. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, <laughs> not she's just like, I got two daughters and I love when people look at me telling tell me how to parent two daughters. And I'm like, Where your kids at? Oh, word, they don't exist? Okay, <laughs> don't, don't tell me about this. Right. So, uh, so anyway, so, so, so take that, so take that as like, this is strictly observational. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that there's possibly, um, this, I think the scriptures really speak to and have always spoken to what we need as humans. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we may have to question our own sort of presuppositions. I think that there might be things that we're reading into the text that we don't know we're reading into the text. And then now like translating that sort of repeating um, some of the learning and then the unlearning that as an adult, you know, like just, just, you yeah, perfect examples like in school where it's like, you know, up until, up until fifth grade, you actually thought Columbus discovered America. <laughs> and then in fifth grade, they go, well, no, nah, I didn't really discover America. It's like, well, why did you tell me that <laughs> the first th four grades? Like, why didn't y'all start in the beginning saying, you know what I'm saying? So like, why are we repeating right. this? Right. You know? so, so I think that like one of those things is this, is like oftentimes we see sort of parables or just Bible stories as like behavioral modifications about mm -hmm. like sort of, these are moral lessons about how you can behave morally and act morally. Just, but that's not, but you don't, but you don't learn it so seminary that like, that's not really the, not the <laughs> sure. But it's like, well, why do we, then let's, rather than waiting until you're in college to figure that out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> let's start earlier, you know? Right. So like, so starting earlier with the, just a better presupposition and letting mm -hmm. go of those ones with ourselves and being like, man, these are not, that's not the primary direction and narrative of scripture you know so i think that when you and when you present that to a student just to be like yo this is not what this is about you know what i'm saying these are like raw flawed ratchet <laughs> deeply broken people scumbags you know what I'm saying? <laughs> sex craves broken family right. 
Like, okay, some of us, you know, some of y'all walk in there, you know, some of our kids walk in there and say, yeah, you got a mom, like a, you know, a stepdad, and, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe single parents, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like, okay, so put yourself in the shoes of a kid in scripture that says like, no, I got a dad and seven moms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. this is a, a <laughs> this is like different. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, this is totally different. So like, so when you let them understand that like, nah, these are like real folk, like mm-hmm. really trying to figure this stuff out. Yeah. Um, then I think that now we're talking about like, like let's major in those things and not in the minors. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, one of the ways I feel like we've been majoring in the minors also, like in my own youth group, like I remember, you know, and I'm not saying don't do this. I'm just saying like, let's major in the minors. Like they, the, when we lived, yeah, you know, again, we're Californians. So we were at the beach all the time. We were in pools all the time. And like, you know, the girls had to wear one pieces with a big black t-shirt over it. Right? <laughs> and I get it. I get it. You know, but like they were, they were all pregnant before we got out of high school. Oh, no. So like, I don't, right. Like, that didn't work. Yeah. So it's right. like, so the pre, so it's like what we're communicating is, okay, so if a girl just covers up, then mm-hmm. apparently I'm not going to struggle with lust. Because right. So you, so you gave me no, like, mm-hmm. no, like sort of, uh, 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 framework to understand my own imagination. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Like yep. that, that, so if I just don't look at it, I'm not going to mm-hmm. struggle with it. You feel right. me? Like, like yep. it was like, like don't major in that. Like, don't, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, so, and, and another thing, you put all the onus of my, like, sexual purity on mm-hmm. her sure. rather than on me, which is like, no, dude, like, she could be wearing a muumuu, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you could still have these problems, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, so I think that, like, in, in just in a real practical way, it's like, yo, mm-hmm. like, let, like, let's go in and let's really understand, like, what the scriptures is actually communicating. Yeah. Um, I think another thing is like, hey, practice not flinching, you know, <laughs> when when these kids like start telling you real stories, mm-hmm. like practice that practice not yeah. flinching, you know, um, because that flinch might be the difference between uh, really the student letting you in, you mm-hmm. know, um, and not letting you in. Yeah. And I think uh, lastly, which I think in a, in a lot of ways, I think we've 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 gone down this uh, path often, but I think, yeah, like expose them to a world that's not theirs Mm -hmm. and not so much as sort of missionaries, but as learners, like, you know, oftentimes, you know, when you have like more affluent churches and they're like, Hey, we want to like do something cross town, you know, with these other sort of students, it's always like going one direction rather than saying, Hey, why don't we go there and learn? You know what I'm saying? Like, why don't we, why don't we, why don't we come up under rather than saying we're going to go serve them you feel me? It's like, wait, why don't we go learn from them? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying like, maybe, maybe, maybe let, let it come the other, maybe let it come the other direction. Why don't you invite that youth pastor to come teach your kids? You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. so I think that that sort of cross-cultural experience, like I'm, I'm a firm believer that like just on the macro sense that that mixture of culture and experience is what makes us all better. Mm-hmm. You know? yes. so I think Yo. that, and it gives us like a, such a better like understanding mm-hmm. of what I like to call like a, a global perspective of yeah. your faith. You uh-huh. know what I'm well, yeah. not only a world that's not theirs, but a world that's not yours. Mm-hmm. Like totally. sometimes yeah, as yes. a youth pastor, we filter mm-hmm. everything. Like we're communicating every week. We mm-hmm. write all of our own lessons. And so everything is just filtered through our one perspective. Mm-hmm. But what yeah. you're saying is exactly right. I believe too, is like, we need to get other perspectives mm-hmm. on our stage. We need to expose our students to people that come from a different background that are hanging with a different crew that, you know, mm-hmm. so that we can have a more uh, like global understanding and be able to see things through a mm-hmm. larger perspective than just yeah. our own context. Yeah. Totally. So I love that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And I think even yeah. just having that posture of learning and teaching our students how to have that posture of learning yeah. is absolutely essential. If we ever want to talk about evangelism with students, totally. because otherwise they just end up seeing people as these kind of flat two dimensional, not people. Yeah. Um, but if we can kind yeah. of teach them, like, hey, we all have something to learn from each other. Yeah. Um, even people who don't believe the same totally. way that we do, it yeah. changes the game, I think, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yo, thanks so much. Oh my for God. those people out there that want to find out more about you, mm-hmm. hear your music, hear the things oh, that right. you're creating, yeah. even above and beyond music, where can they go to find out more about you? Yeah, yeah. So our, our website is humblebeast.com. Um, and all of my socials are just prop hip hop. So that's Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. It's all just prop hip hop. We try to keep everything pretty, uh, 
pretty updated. Cool. Yeah. So Love good. It. And the Red Couch Podcast. And you, the Red Couch Podcast. You're working on season two right now. When yes. is that debuting? So season two is supposed to start um, after New Year's. Cool. Uh, so we're lining up interviews and stuff like that. We're going to like, you know, definitely keep the... Uh, the the sort of the punches the things people loved mm -hmm. the same you know but we're trying to add a few voices um we've been trying to take in feedback and to see how we can make it better but yeah yeah awesome. we'll be back after new year's so good dude thank you so much for hanging Yo, with us thank you're you. awesome this has oh, been so good thank you guys